so if it's cool with you, Keith, I didn't want to sort of uh, focus on anything really other but than the commercial zone project, just because you know. I'll talk about anything. It never hurts, right? <laughs> certainly, I, certainly. Um, anything you want to know about this project and the stuff I'm finding out for sure. It could be good to talk about it. We find out more about it. Nothing like um, a crowdfunding campaign to get to focus. Definitely. I had just a couple of questions I wanted to ask you specifically about that project. After the release of the Flowers of Romance album, Pill moved from London to New York. Yes. So that was uh, planned, I, planned, but it happened, yes. I guess roughly about uh, April 82 or so? Yeah, kind of a bit before and a bit after. We were in and about New York, 79, 80, 81. Yeah, yeah. 81, we started getting a bit more... Um, of a predilection to think, you know, let's get the fuck out of here. And I don't know what triggered it, but uh, I, I was sort of there first, got this rich riot thing going, and then and they sort of came in, and I was gone, and then we had a loft there, and then I moved Public Image Limited there. I said, well, I, might, I can say it now, let's double our money, you know, yeah, uh, and and get on with something. But that was then, that was sort of before, this a little bit com before Commercial Zone. You know, we didn't make flowers in, in America, yeah. but we, we were definitely in and around America. So what would you say was the initial inspiration for Commercial Zone Project? Was it already conceived back while well, in London or was it sort of the cultural difference from moving from London to Manhattan? And No, um, and, and there is stuff mentioned in that and this is, uh, this is uh, there's some writing. I don't know if a preview came out or something, but there, there's stuff about me being in New York and it being the state of the art and what better place than to be in the Commercial Zone. But it was more of an artistic thing and from Keith's head thinking like a kid where I was coming from and it, this is weird, but you might get this. I used, I wasn't a fanatic. One of the people well on my radar was David Bowie, and I really liked him. Okay, now I never turned on to him. I knew about him, but I never turned on to him until the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, fourth album. All right, now I'm a kid when I'm thinking this. You know, I'm probably 14 or 15, and I'm like, and Hunky Dory, the second album, wicked, wicked. They're all great, yeah. but Hunky Dory, I mean, he really should have made it with that, okay? I mean, he wasn't really that big when I was turning on to him, but he seemed so big because he was so important to all of us, because we're all, you know, between between 13 and 17, you know, there's some people around that are 21, you know, again, there's this whole shift, you know, the Beatles are over and something was going on and there's reggae things going on, but this glam thing and the rock, it, it, it still had the Brit rock thing. It was, so there was a lot going on there. Anyway, back to the point, he, he kind of made it, you know, he, because I am David Bowie, when he did Rise of Four Z Stardust, the greatest thing he did was then he split the band up, yeah? But what I'm saying is it was his fourth record. I thought the Pill first record was really good. And in retrospect, I, I, I think it's a lot better than ever. Metal Box was Metal Box. We all love it. Flowers of Romance was the only thing possible that could happen with Pill. We were going to remain Pill and be as true to Pill as we could be. You know, we were. I was very serious about this, okay? <laughs> and I just thought, and I always had this feeling like we were either going to make it, whatever that meant, on the first album, we're going to make it on the fourth one. And I thought, it, well, it's going to have to be the fourth. I want it to be Commercial Zone. And the thing about Commercial Zone for me at the time was um, 3D computer graphics and what have you were very, very new. And there was a whole new graphic way of looking at things and stuff was happening with Wozniak and everything since 77 and Steve Jobs and there was all this stuff going on so the ambience wasn't just punk you know and there was you know there was tons of stuff going on it all kind of fit together and, and so for me a commercial zone could be the amazingness of just driving through Las Vegas when you're in the desert and you can see the lights and then you come to Walls and you're just in a commercial zone and I always imagine a floating through space and just like zooming into these adverts and you know so artistically it was a sort of cartoony 3D thing in my mind but also it was very serious and I thought this could be so much fun record companies used they used to like gimmicks and they used to do some really bad things sometimes they do some good things a good example of a good gimmick was the metal box okay because it was it was a serious gimmick you know um, but it was a gimmick i guess but the point is is um you know the commercial zone could have more sort of um, predilection towards more artistic gimmicks and what have you it seems to be being realized more now when it could never get there because of all the bickering and bollocks and kind of weird hate we've been together too long you know that was going on and jealousy between band members and creativity and just what was pill and what wasn't it was so simple if any pill don't do it you know in other words best idea wins or the idea that's good enough you have to go with it but invariably um my quality control was i mean it, the fact that we put flowers out you know it was a very conscious decision and commercial zone was just supposed to hit the areas it was one of the things i said i'd always say well it's going to be better than all three of our albums put together it has to be because we made those already so it's got the essence of all that and we're calling it commercial zone and i love commercial music you know so um the original one had this is not a love song on it and a song i called mad max but he went into these awful lyrics like, good lyrics <laughs> and it wasn't a rule it had to be commercial 
commercial, but you know, I mean, he could have just sung about something else, and it would have been, you know, the thing that we had in mind, this kind of Mad Max vibe, because Mad Max was very big in the first movie, and then you know, Freedom Road Warrior and all that, you know, it got a bit silly like things do. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, it, it actually kind of leads into the next one. I was going to ask. Uh, there's a lot of mention behind Commercial Zone, the uh, creative differences behind the making of the fourth Pill album. What would you say were the main obstacles in the process and the completion, or sorry, not the completion of this project? It, did well, it start I, off completely as difficult to begin with? Because you did make mention of sort of the auxiliary members. Aside from members, yeah. right? Because I don't want to turn this into a dishing thing because it's unnecessary. And I've got hindsight and retrospect on it, and I can tell you what happened. And uh, not because it is easy, but because it's hard. We're in New York. We want to be in New York. That was easy, okay? And definitely in the right place. Yeah, we've got to make this record, okay? But by the time we sort of all got together, I told you, we had this situation where, you know, Virgin had called and said, well, you're living in the US now, so we're not giving you the advance. And I said, well, why don't you just give us it anyway, Richard, because you're going to give us it anyway. And he said, well, actually, no, Keith, I don't feel like it. And I thought, okay, you know, fuck you very much. And and like, um, hey, John, you know, <laughs> Richard's not giving us the advance. And he's like, mm. you know, because, I mean, whatever. And that's where he was coming from. Anyway, what it meant was we didn't have a fucking budget. We didn't have a budget to live. We didn't have a budget to do anything. And we'd been doing quite well as a band. Um, Flowers of Romance didn't do us any favours in, uh, what, what are they called, fan base realm. You know, so we're in these difficult circumstances where we're having to kind of really do it for real reasons. You know, we're going to have to make our fourth album it's got to be our best effort so there's more pressure than the first album and I you know I didn't realise at the time what a state we were in that there was no wobble anymore there was never a stable drummer after Jim we were never really happy with that side of the thing after Jim on autopilot you know but again uh, the, the band developed because Jim was no longer in the band it forces into a new realm it pushes forward okay you know all this was going on and I hadn't considered the fact I mean the pill thing was transparent so I didn't realise I had to look at this and think how the fuck am I going to do this and I thought well I'll just have to go in and do it and that was okay and it was a lot of work to get studio time and we had to do lots of deals and a guy called Bob Tulipan came in to the company in um, in New York and, and helped us and he was ideal pill type guy and we were just getting endless conflict let's just put it this way endless conflict from everyone else involved when it came to the shows when it came to the actual recording studio scenario, there was a lot of work done in the studio. I, I fucking lived in that studio for a long time, you know, a lot of months and uh, a lot of pain, a lot of inspiration as well. There were good moments and everything. It was fucking close. I had a Japanese series of gigs arranged as well, and that pulled in 100,000, right? Now, this is how bad this situation was, right? That when, because I pulled this Japanese thing in, okay, we had to deliver the single to Japan first because Richard wasn't going to be a big priority to me, was he, you know, <laughs> after that? I mean, you know, even if I was talking to him, I wouldn't have delivered it to him then. So these Japanese guys, so this is not a love song. There was this big argument over the thing. It was like, I was really tired. And I said, all you got to do is turn the multi-track on and fucking put it onto two tracks. Yeah? And they did this dub mix of it. And it was okay, great, done a dub mix, okay? But the point was, we just wanted the commercial basic fucking song, you know? So I came in the next night. I, 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 said, I had to get one more night off this guy, this lawyer guy, Bob Kalina, a great guy. And I said, look, I've got to remix it. And they fucked it up you know and I went in there and I'm mixing it and that day me and John had sort of made up for all intents and purposes about whatever had been going on but he'd gone to LA to uh, meet this new lawyer for him his name was Barry Tyman. I called him Barry Tiresome. But the thing is, is that, so he wasn't there. I'm in there just remixing a good old commercial, exactly how it should be, pill version. And, you know, Martin's pacing up and down. Next thing I know, John's on the phone going, get out of my studio. I'm like, your studio, you know, hey, you know what? Fuck you, kibosh, put the phone down, finish the mix, give it to the Japanese guys that arrive exactly on time. Very Japanese, you know, got the dough. And then I didn't walk away with the dough. I just said, okay, Martin, you know, guess what? Get someone else for Japan, okay? Because that was the next thing it was like you know for all intents and purposes this thing was finished we delivered a single we had it now we knew what it was going to be I knew what it was going to be with what we had you know I released it because it did more than just get in under the wire and I walked away from the Japanese thing the Tokyo thing everything you know so whatever the fucking conflicts were that's how I behaved because of them mm -hmm. so now going back to this new project present day on the campaign you mentioned there's going to be totally unheard original tracks featured on this release yeah, absolutely. from yeah, uh, the original commercial zone sessions I guess that'd be between 
I guess like May 82, May 83. No, 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 no. Noel said there's going to be unheard tracks from the original commercials and sessions. What they actually said, they being me, was uh, I pulled a few tracks. I've actually leaked a few back again because they're not as bad. You know, it's an emotional thing. Okay. What I was saying was I pulled a few tracks and I've got original tracks and I'm recording certain tracks. Gotcha. If the campaign goes to a certain point, I can actually re record the original ones. And I still don't know whether, whether I need to or not. I, I might revisit the slab and I've got remixes of Love Song on there anyway that are dynamite. They're just fucking cool remixes that so many people covered that song. It was fucking commercial. So, no, there were never any outtakes from Commercial Zone. You know, there's some YouTube channel that's always going on, but they're outtakes from that shit that they went on. Yeah, you know? I think I'm familiar with that. I've noticed there's one yeah. channel called Flowers of Romance, actually, yeah, that's posted up. I know, and, girl. I know him. Oh, okay, I, was, I wasn't too sure if it was even you who had posted those. But I noticed you'd there's made comments on the videos. Down. Yeah, I'd take him down. He's really got on my nerves. My girl, I mean, I liked him at first, and I was thinking, hey, you know what? I've just recorded an album. Why don't you upload it now, you know, before I even put it on the market? I mean, so there is a sort of double-edged thing there. I know YouTube's YouTube and everyone's on it, but at the same time, you know, I think you put Yin and Yang up there about three and a half weeks after it came out. I was like, Miguel, fucking take it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's gonna be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? So it's a double-edged thing, you know, but um, anyway, these outtakes, they started really getting on my nerves. I mean, they're not out fucking takes from New York, you know. Because <laughs> I was comparing... I don't know how he got that stuff. <laughs> well, I was comparing, uh, and I was going to ask, sort of what you put out, I guess, November 83 is the Commercial Zone LP, comparing with what he's got posted on his YouTube channel. And for example, the slab, there's, you know, he's got a slightly different mix on there with the drums still on there, uh, yeah, the, the vocals still... There was a mix of the slab, yeah. okay? And I wanted it to be all casual. Um, Martin had done this... And I realized that there was potential for that, for this um, order of death, because I, I was supposed to be doing the soundtrack to the movie John had just made. Fuck that up too, <laughs> yeah, okay? But anyway, so I did the slab. And I said, no, I want it like this. I, I It's more radio off. I want, I want it with the drums out. So I pulled the drum. I did this mix, the orchestral mix, and Prophet fived it up more. And then it was just a stupid argument. Well, they wanted to keep the drums in. Okay, so they kept, so they there was a version with the drums in, but it never came out on my white record. But it might have made it to the in-between black record because I got ripped off on this album twice as well. You know, I did a deal with a guy in New York. Just get it pressed and get it out. Important records. He gave me 10 grand, pressed up quite a good few, probably 10,000. And then he calls me, oh, Richard Prince is threatening to sue me, Keith. And I said, no, no, don't worry. And I said, look, I'll come to your office now, get me on a conference call, you know, and we'll talk to Richard and you'll see that you've got the rights in it. And he was like, well, Keith, even if even if we did that, I'd feel really weird about putting it out. And I gave him the freaking money back. I gave him 8,500 back, okay, because I did it through lawyers, and it, the same lawyers that had the studio. And they were saying, Keith, you should have kept the money. And they were right, and I knew they were right. And then the fucking guy, I'm doing it. I said, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'm doing it, I'm doing it for my skateboard. I just do it through New York, because that's where I live. And I knew these guys were distributing it all over the place. And I'd said it, cash on delivery, buy the box for you, had to buy 10. And obviously, if somebody really wanted one, of course, I sold it to them. And I made them with custom covers. And all that happened was they ended up in record stores for like $125 on the wall, you know, because it was a one-off custom yeah. cover. Now, that I guess is to 2014. Uh, you can get, the pledge hasn't gone up. I'm going to put the pledge up in the next 16 hours or something. There's going to be a pledge for 125 It's the same thing. It's like the 75 pledge, except for you get an organic evolving cover with it, okay? And I've been meaning to do these covers for a long time, and I've been looking for a spot to, like, introduce them. And it wasn't available at the beginning of this campaign, but now it is because I've been able to see what the campaign is yielding and where it's going, if I can take it into what I call the commercials, okay? Because yeah, yeah. 2051 is a big project with me, and everything leads to 2051. And 2051 has been around a long time. It's got fantastic music. You know, I've been composing music for it. I do it all on... It, it's much like the slab. It's all this, you know... This little sort of acoustic, heavy-duty... Heavy-duty stuff, you know. Um, much like the slab, that, just that... dramatic kind of Sergio Lovino type stuff, right? It's very cinematic, very exactly. yeah. yeah. soundscapes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it's a sort of different dynamic. <laughs> yeah, it's dramatic. And the slab was, you know, just with the... Uh, <laughs> 
I didn't want to do it. And I knew, I fucking knew they were going to, this is what you want, this is what you get. Oh, come on, you know. And it was much like with the clash, when they, well, them calling it the clash was the first, but when it was white right, it was like, oh, come on, you know. And in much, with, you can see the parting of the ways. I mean, it was the best thing for everyone with Pill, too, that I, I separated myself. But I do endeavor to, you know, continue the tradition of public image and where it was coming from. It's just worked out that way. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do my master plan. It's just like, I kind of went all around this neighborhood of life and ended up and everything I'm doing now is exactly what I wanted Pill to be I'm working with a team of people we're not a band we're a company we don't do gigs I, we, I want to do the 2051 show I want to do shows maybe you know three you know Tokyo LA London who fucking knows some kind of cool streaming virtual thing you know more than just streaming okay um, and there will be experiments along the way because this show if someone gave me the green light today I still reckon it, if someone gave me a green light in all my facility I reckon it would take me a year so I reckon this show the 2051 show is over two years away but I really think it's going to be good and 2051 has got this whole visual content this whole 3D thing going on it's always had a, a real movie aspect to it I dumped that and now it's reading fantastic as a book and then I'm thinking this is all working the 3D shit's working the music's working you know so it's a project I'm having to put together incrementally 2014 wasn't a fill-in project there is a catharsis involved and there's unfinished business maybe my last unfinished business so this sort of uh, leads me into my next question now do you see the commercial Zone 2014 project now is a missing piece to a puzzle 30 years ago or an entity of its own completely or do you even see this as a start of a new phase of commerciality? Uh, I don't really commerciality is the confusing word there yeah. but I see commercial zone as a step that ticks what I feel are the right boxes from the past okay um, consolidates the present and is the best way I can get to the future that most inspires me and that I want to share as Keith as Pill you know and yeah <laughs> and so another question Question for you: If we had crowdfunding options like Indiegogo and Kickstarter around when you were making records with Hill, do you think there would have been as many obstacles in the way of the creative process of recording by sort of cutting out middlemen, i.e., the record companies, and doing it yourself, going back to basically the basis of Pill? There's a lot of questions in there. Okay, <laughs> actually, all right, but I think the unknown phenomena of crowdfunding was the kind of thing we were leaning towards much more than what became the indie scene. To me, indie was just a major record company in sheep's clothing that didn't give you advances okay and and that leads back to answering your question we didn't have a fucking need for crowdfunding as public image limited because i used to be in the clash john used to be in the pistols we had no end of interest very interesting a lot easier to do music then tail end of the old model and we you know we consolidated that by saying you know we're not a band we're a company we're going to produce ourselves you know we're going to manage ourselves i mean we fucked it up but it was the it was a great idea you know you know we know how we want to sound everyone works on that model now i do it myself you do everything you do in your front room you probably wouldn't mind having a, a like-minded guy that was running the console for you while you're recording but when it comes down to it we've all done it you know since the 90s we've all said you know fuck this and i can do this and you have to record something and it goes well yeah. you know doesn't always you know <laughs> but it, it always better having a, a few guys involved the ambience you know the ambience of people and what have you um anyway um crowdfunding would have been more what i was envisaging in my imagination and could see coming when I was talking about electronic media and what was then the internet and what is now the world wide web but there was an internet around um, when I was very enthusiastic about all that stuff but like I said we didn't have too much uh, you know commercial zone was the first time we experienced let's just say fin financial inertia and you know we got around it and at the end you know I mean we all got paid I mean Richard paid me to put out my own version he gave me a further advance in publishing to sort of say uh, he I I'm going to have to go along with John. I said, well, I guess you're going to have to go along with Pills. So, it, you know, I don't get that if you want to release this, then release the fucking thing because it is good enough. Otherwise, I wouldn't be handing it up to you. It's not like, oh, this is the best I can do for the fucking <laughs> advance you can give me. You know, it was simple. It was like, I'm talking to him. I'm in Maida Vale. I'm in London, right? So I, I just could have said, you know, 100 grand, please. Thank you. You know, and now we're finished it. That wasn't the issue was it was done. I wasn't in the band. I hadn't been to Japan. They still hadn't put it out. Oh, Keith, I want to release this. Well, release it, Richard. Well, I can't because John won't let me. I'll John won't let you. That makes me laugh. John won't let you, yeah? And I just said, look, if you want to support John, that's okay. I'm still putting this out. And he said, yes, you are. And I'm going to give you some money and you've got the rights to it. And I 
thought, you know, what are you going to do? It can't be bad, can it? And that was like jumping out of jumbo jet, not being in pill anymore for me. Okay, because I walked away from a lot of money. I walked away from a lot of pill. I did exactly what I did with the clash. I just walked away from a definite, this is going to make it. But that's why it's a lot to walk away from twice. <laughs> so uh, here we are in 2014. And it's kind of worked out, okay, this was right under my nose. And I suddenly sussed it about February. Wait a minute, this is so stupid. This has to come out and this can be enhanced and finished. And, and this is really good to get to 2051. And there's a bunch of stuff, you know. And so it's good to get the word out. I'm around and active. Definitely. And, you know, if I deliver this, like I'm saying, I'm ticking a few boxes. I'm jogging a memory. I'm ticking boxes from the past because a lot of people are throwing links for Metal Box, the Whistle Test, uh, the first record all the fucking time. The first record just been released again or for the first time in America. So um, I'm ticking the boxes of the past. I hope I can tick some good boxes right here in the present with the original stuff that's on there. I really hope this fucking thing goes twice target because then I put the cherry on top and I'm very, very confident about 2014. At the moment, I'm certainly happy with it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be available. And I like the crowdfunding thing because you can create... You have to work at it a bit, but you can. You can create alternatives and every you know everybody can mix and match their own record. And you know how we all buy records again because there aren't other records worth buying, you know? And it's, yeah. not, it's, <laughs> That's not, it. it's not me trying to have my wicked way with you. It's like, you know, you get the download, you're going to end up getting the physical one because when you see these this new lot of the kind, everyone's going to want one, you know? And is everyone five people or is there... You know, yeah. that's what I don't know. I don't know who the fuck's really interested. It's a good question, though, I, I guess, to ask. It does, you know, one sale equal five, sort of, you know? Does one download then equal 20? Or um, But the thing, too, is, it, and that's something you just touched on, if the quality is there, if the product is producing quality, people are going to go out and buy it no matter what. This is this is what I want to hear. Yeah. You know, I think there are there's more than an interested party out there. It's not like, you know, there's five guys in every state that might be interested in this stuff. I, I thought this is what the people that were into music and art wanted they wanted interesting releases that you know had a visual aspect a music aspect this isn't my next single I'm calling it it's called commercial and there's not a fucking single on it you know <laughs> Come think it. it's not commercial uh, you know I mean I went through this when I delivered flowers to, and Simon Draper and he's listening to it and I'm like Simon and I really meant it this is so commercial man you're gonna love this but I really thought the whole of flowers was commercial and he called me in about day and a half later he said Keith I, I need to talk to you there was two things he wanted to do one was sell me these tannoys that he had these fantastic tannoys he had in the office and he looked at me in the face and he went, Keith. And I said, yeah. And he goes, Flowers of Romance. I said, yeah. He went, it's not commercial. I went, what? And he went, no, Keith, really, it's not commercial. And I went, well, it's a good single. And he said, yeah, but you've got to get your head around this. It's not commercial. And it's like, all right, now, so from that lesson, because I learned lessons, I can tell you, commercial zone isn't necessarily commercial. Dare I even say it? It's fucking good, okay? In fact, the last place it would be is in a commercial zone right now, because to me, a commercial zone would have McDonald's and pret and manger in there and just all these horrible fucking Walmart and so in fact, you know, my Las Vegas dream of a commercial zone, okay, has turned into a health and safety fucking nightmare. <laughs> so, you know, it's Mike, it's Keith's commercial zone, okay? <laughs> so that's what you're getting involved with this campaign, you know? It can't be bad, yeah? Well, see, and uh, that's one thing, too, is if someone clicks on the links, if they look into even just your YouTube channel, they look into <laughs> Keith's work, they're going to see there's more musically, there's more visually going on. It's just in a music lover's best interest to invest in a project like this. Whether or not it was Keith Levine presenting it or another artist, you see just the genuine work that's going into it. You see that it's art. You're creating something new that's completely different than anything that's going on right now. So it's, yeah, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's certainly refreshing. You're like a breath of fresh air, right? <laughs> and I'm telling you because, I mean, you know, I don't think you're being nice here. I think you just meant everything you totally. just said. It's fucking cool. And that's the point, isn't it? That's exactly what I'm trying to deliver. <laughs> I was saying this to my brothers here and we were talking earlier and I was saying this to him because he was asking me about the campaign and what you just said was exactly what I said about well I'm trying to deliver exactly what you just described and I was, and I was going there is an interest there, you know there's an interest we just got to find this neighbourhood electronically now you Crack know it. That. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just now spreading the word yeah. um, one more question just to yeah, sort of no. uh, tie in with these uh, whole commercial zone how much of a possibility do you see how realistic of a possibility is it to see you perform commercial zone live like you said I know it, it's a 21 a, show encompasses everything okay, okay? Now, if there are shows beforehand and there will be if it's all about time and energy now not because not because I'm 50 and a little bit more but because I'm better off sitting around composing than sitting in a hotel room displaced doing a gig that I just did last night so you're never ever going to see me tour you never did okay if I can if a promoter or I mean I want to crowdfund 2051 for the Albert Hall okay and I think by crowdfunding that show and putting it together it will propagate to New York LA and hopefully Tokyo. Well, I was 
was uh, um, going to mention, I know you expressed specific interest in Tokyo and Manhattan for the commercial. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yes, Tokyo and Manhattan, you, that's 100% right. I mean, that's where it started. And, uh, okay, so I did Fuji in 2012. I still didn't do Tokyo. Fantastic interest out there. Because it's not 1983 and because I did it after 2010, it's so weird, right? I never saw this coming, me doing this 2014 thing. I was always 2051, 2051, but this step's really necessary. I forgot what we were really talking about. <laughs> I just, just a possibility of performing live, but I guess the 2051 is the main... Yeah, what I'll probably do is just aim towards just stay in this 2051 track. And if it's possible to do a show that's an hour, at least an hour and 20 minutes that's worth showing up for, I'll do it. Pretty simply, it's worth doing if it's just a little bit more than sustainable. I don't mind playing intimately with my acoustic guitar and stuff, but I haven't got time to go around and, and say, you know, he's playing at 24 locations over the next, you know, I'd rather, be, I'm better off making this stuff I'm making. A show is inevitable, a really good one. And when you see the show, you're going to see a night of love songs. You're going to see, there's all these little concepts that we've had for shows that we haven't dropped. We've just said, well, that's good, well, that's good. And we've got kids. Okay, the 2051 show won't be a one man Keith Levine show. Okay, you'll get a lot from it. Don't want to spill the beans too much, don't, because you don't want to talk about something too much, before, you know, because you want it to happen. But I mean, I've always wanted to do this Night of Love songs thing, okay? And that just involves really good music. It involves my music as well, but it involves Burt Bacharach, you know, the Beach Boys, all sorts of people, the monkeys, okay? Gotcha. Kids. And this London 1976 kind of play gig thing we were playing with, I just realised just a few days ago, I want the Albert Hall, and I want to do the 2051 show there. I want it to be two and a half hours long, and I want to try this thing. I'm not going to be in it for the whole... You know, there'll be other kids playing punk music at the beginning, and there'll be some prog rock in it, and then there'll be this Night of Love song... Okay. And you know me, I might not have an LED array, but I might have a fucking dirty great video screen. I might go projection because it's too easy. All this LED array and everything else, and you can program and you can fly anything. I've got a great guy that does Vivian Westwood sets who's really good with black and white and lighting. And, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about 2051 this morning and the environments we're going to have in the real footage because I've been modeling this stuff. And the same guy that does the sets makes these fantastic, sustainable environments from everything that would otherwise be waste products and turns it to its advantage and there's all these elements we can put into it so the essence of 2051 or camera dodgers was always that somehow 2051 is now it's real there's something about it it's supposed to be colorful inspirational real and better than blade runner somehow <laughs> I, you know what i mean it, the magic you know, not there's no fucking story to 2051 okay. you know there, there's low there's humorous elements there's serious shit there's artistic shit fantastic music yeah you can tell i don't know what it is yet you know, which is, that's okay, yeah? Well, that's the exciting part too, right? That's the element of... Yeah. Uh... So the big element now is 2014 leads to 2051. 2051 is now, 2014 is now. <laughs> you know, so it's this exact now that's counting at the moment. This clock that's ticking with the campaign is making us focus and opening doors to get the word out to see if we've got more interested parties. Much like I'd love a guy like you on every block, you know? <laughs> I mean, proper interested parties that are inspired. And actually, it's not about money, is it? Well, that's about the work, the, the art itself, right? So, people are dying for it. I'm dying for it, you know? And it's, here's me reaching out across the world to you, you know, just saying like, bless you, Keith, for, you know, well, getting this together. And like I said, the more, uh, you know, you catch wind of Keith Levine's got this thing going on, you click on the links, you click on the YouTube links, you're just like, holy shit, and you see the visuals. And that was one whole aspect that I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are familiar with your work as a musician aren't even aware of the whole visual side of it. Um, and I was going to also ask if you caught anything of Kraftwerk's recent tours. I just saw them uh, about a month ago or so back. They're using 3D visuals. I'm scared to look because they're so fucking good, you know, and Kraftwerk are so good. And they've got, you know, I'll get upset because let's face it they've got the facility one thing that's quite magic about this I mean pretty much the stuff I use for 3D and everything I downloaded for free okay yes I got the pro versions in the end I got good at it it was, uh, it was stupid not to actually I've got a relationship with the guy that codes the rendering program and it's a real time renderer and it's really fucking exciting because of the stuff he, it's actually a photorealistic renderer for architecture okay but it's really exciting because he's got a history in video games we've both got the same favourite video game we're both aware of each other anyways artists 
scientists and whatever you call us. There, there's just a lot going on with this guy. He's got, it's a program called Light Up. He's got Light Up Analytics as well. He's online. I mean, there's so many elements, un unexploited elements. And when I say unexploited, I mean, this he guy's got so much creativity under the hood of this program. And he's, he's the only coder I've ever known that is a true artist. And he can somehow go home and write all these numbers out and it turns into this. The program's amazing, the, the Light Up program I use. And you can download it for nothing. Huh. You can try it out, you know, and then it's worth spending not very much money on. I mean, not very much. About the price of a hefty album. About the price of a Keith album. <laughs> no, um, all this stuff, everything, production, synthesizers, 3D graphics, all this stuff are aspects of my work. Definitely. Okay? And I'm not over fussy about it either. I'm not, I mean, I love Jules Martin. I'm not Jules Martin about production. Because of attention span and the way things are with the internet and the access to everything that we have and the fact that it's probably a bit rebellious that we can go in with a microscope when we're looking at our sound or what have you. I like working on three things at once because like exploiting that attention span. I don't always do it, but I do do it a lot more with media and electronics. You know, if I'm with the Mac and I've got a few things running. Yeah. I'll run them all at the same time and capture it all at the same time. And that's the essence of what you're seeing with some of that 3D stuff. There's, there's so much stuff I haven't put up. I'm releasing Search for Absolute Zero on DVD and CD. It's coming out on Gonzo Multimedia. It's a current release. It's on my website, but this yeah. the CD version is going to have at least four of these really eye candy things in and a few other things on it. Because it's a special one, I'll probably put something on it that isn't on it right now. And it's coming out in vinyl and it will be available on yes. iTunes <laughs> and Amazon, the whole fucking nine. So just the simple download will be available. If you want to go there and get a bit better, get the vinyl from Gonzo or the special CD, DVD, if you really want to go there. I don't know what I'm doing with Search at the moment because I'm all focused on CZ and I did that and that was a nice expansion for Search. I've made Search available on the campaign just to download. Videos come with that but it's not the same package as this DVD thing. That's just the initial thing. Really, what was going on with Search was I had enough stuff. I'd just done three really current things. Sorry, two. I mean, three really current things and two with Wobble. Wobble went home and I did the actual track Search for Absolute Zero. And I thought, I've got this stuff. I really want to release. I'm putting this metal box in dub in the studio stuff on. Wobble did yin and yang, which was all dubbed up, which is fine. And, and my one was, this is how it done. This was how it's done. Pretty much like metal box in real time. Didn't do it on purpose to do it like metal box, but our studio process worked out the same. This was done. These three tracks and then all the other tracks that are on there. And then there's tracks embedded in some of the 3D stuff. So it's like, you might hate the graphics, but you might say, this fucking track's really intense. Like, there's the only uh, performance I did with Murder Global. And we did one performance and fucking hell. And, it, you know, I mean, it was almost a rule. You know, uh, you weren't allowed to write anything until you were standing there at the second. It was beyond imp improvisation. And there's a thing called Area 52 that's on, it's not ultra over colorful, but it just basically came with four videos. One's a slideshow. One's really interesting. It's exactly what Metal Boxing Dub was before I'd even spoken to Wobble. So I'd made this video and it's all the pill things all together in one, four windows, this, that, the other. I just did it on the fucking map with quick time players, yeah? And we dubbed up stuff, dare I say it, dubbed up stuff that hasn't been heard as well. Is that and all the video clips? Almost like eight windows at once? Yeah, sometimes. And then it turns into one thing, turns into another. Turn, and then it goes from that. It's called What the Fuck Else, okay? <laughs> it goes from that into what happens. It starts off with sort of metal box pill in dub. And you're seeing the first of three or four videos in different windows and then up front and what have you. And then you realize, wait a minute, well, I'm listening to the Tom Schneider interview, right? And it's just a little bit dubbed about, you know, so questions are repeated and responses are repeated. And that happens again to newer, more dubbed up music. And when I say dubbed, not echoed, I mean transposed. So you've got the introduction to the slap going bang, and you've got the drumming to something you recognize, like flowers or something. And it worked. I didn't plan to put this with that, ka chung, ka chung, ka chung. All right. And then it goes into, and then you start hearing all this weird feedback and anxiety. And it's the other track bleeding in and the interview kind of bleeds out. You haven't seen this, have you? I've seen just a small clip that you're describing, but it's roughly about, like, say, a minute and 30 seconds long. Dude, what you've seen is the thing where there's a thing very, very similar to oh, okay. it. And at the end, I come up and I say, you know, look, we're doing this fucking thing, yeah. get involved. No, no, no. That was a weird coincidence, too. <laughs> but um, what, you'll love this video. You'll love the fucking tune. I thought it. that was wild. Those videos are insane, Keith. <laughs> no, man, listen, I'll send you this what the fuck else. Okay, the one I got in mind, when it comes up, I mean, you know, if you look for info, it might even say unknown artists and stuff like that. It's just mine, okay? I'll send you this zip, and it, it's, um, I like this what the fuck else thing, and there's a couple of 3D things on there that I'm okay with. And then there's this one sort of teary slideshow type thing. 
That's awesome. I'm excited to check it all out. You like, you like it. I don't want to. Uh, I realize we're almost touching about an hour here, and uh, I know you got some things lined up. I don't want to keep you, you too much longer. Right, Sounds so good. fucking great, man. All right, all right. Keith. Um, pleasure talking to you. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon for sure, and definitely uh, I'll send Kathy all the stuff as soon as I get them. Okay, fantastic. Super. Take good care. Okay, bro. See you. Good, man. Speak.